George Michael and father figure on WROI from the Shepherd Chevy Buick GMC studio. It's time for From the Bench with Rochester Athletic Director Kevin Rainey. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm great. We're here. Yes, we are. Uh, so yesterday, the CDC released their weekly updates for the schools and for everyone else. So what's that look like for sports this week? Well, the CDC comes out with their uh, county designations with their um, color coding. So we were, um, the county was placed in the red. So what that means for us, for athletics at home, is um, inside events only for, so for right now in the fall, uh, we're looking at um, four tickets per athlete. Um, and we will get those tickets to the head coaches to distribute to the to the players to take take back to their families. Um, and there will be an email that, that'll go out in final forms that'll kind of uh, give a little bit more uh, detail on on uh, how that procedure is going to work. So uh, that's the only real restriction. We're not um, mandating masks inside. Uh, we do want to make sure you know it. Use that. Still use the common sense uh, distancing and um, try to stay within your family units when you come um, to the events. Um, for we're still at fifty percent capacity, so the middle school has one side bleacher, so they'll have to keep things spread apart. Our next home um, indoor contest with at the high school is scheduled for the sixteenth, and that's um, volleyball. And we'll have, again, both sides uh, of the gym bleachers pulled out so the visitors will sit on one side and we'll sit on the other uh, with, our, with our fans. And uh, we would just try to make sure that everybody's still using that common sense approach that uh, Mrs. Vance has talked about with the distancing and, you know, sanitizing and, and those kinds of things. But that four ticket per athlete for indoor events is what we're looking at. Okay, so not a whole lot of changes then to the outdoor events such as football and tennis. Football, tennis, soccer, golf, cross country. As of right now, all of those are um, no restrictions. Um, we we will have um, still have concessions like always. Um, that may change. That's that's for us at Rochester. The um, other events that they might have, like they have the Manchester has a big cross country invitational this weekend and they may um, they may have other mandates and restrictions um, for their for their county or Wabash County but as of right now we, we don't know of any uh, but we will certainly pass those along to parents and students uh, via final forms as soon as soon as we hear about um, any of those restrictions or any other uh, venue that we travel to um, we will get that information to the coaches and parents as soon as we know. So uh, what sports do we have going on between now and next Thursday? I know quite a lot, but uh, let's see if you can remember them all. Yeah, we've got them all. They, they, we do. Tonight we have girls soccer is at home, um, and that's, that'll be fun. Um, see the girls back on that. They were at Logan Sport earlier this week, and um, we, we uh, worked really hard with uh, John Glenn to be able to get a uh, – boys match up there boys soccer match up there and they uh, indicated yesterday that they were not able to get officials so that one has been uh, and we've tried to reschedule that one several times so that one's going to come off of the uh, docket for sure because we still have all of the conference matches that we have to make sure we play um so that that is just not that one's just not going to happen and then we have you know tennis is in action um always and um girls golf seems like they play every day which is pretty great um i don't think that they have any problems with any of that no they're having a great time and the weather has finally turned for them a little bit i saw a couple of the girls this morning and they were um uh, they were commenting how nice it was to be able to play without um feeling like they were smothering themselves with the heat it's been really hot and of course you know we get the middle school football back in gear and volleyball and um get some of those home contests rolling uh the football team will head to whitco um friday try and get uh coach schaefer's second win of his coaching career on the board and then we'll be home uh for wabash and that uh may have been published as a homecoming um, 
that has been changed to youth football night. Uh, so the youth football teams will be recognized at halftime uh, next week. And homecoming has been moved to October 1st. Um, it's kind of a planning uh, for planning purposes and things like that. We we'll want make sure we have the activities uh, nailed down for the kids for that, that fun week. Okay, so uh, there has been that small change with the homecoming and uh, the youth football league being announced. Uh, I know that was originally scheduled for October 1st, so that is next Friday. Yes, I, the youth football night will be next Friday the 10th. Okay. Um, we checked with uh, Justin Miller, who's the president of the Youth Football League, and uh, he met with the coaches, and they, they said that that wouldn't be a problem. We did that last week, and uh, we you know, are looking forward to having them. And another terrific student section when we play Wabash on the 10th. Uh, great crowd the other night when we played Knox on Friday. It was a lot of fun. Um, the band was there. They did a little halftime uh, performance don't stop believing that was really that was really great those kids have worked really hard and um, coach Schaefer liked to recognize um, the involvement of the students and the cheerleaders and the band and it was a total uh, Rochester high school team effort and it was uh, and it was uh, it was a fun night yeah and a uh, big shout out to the football team for getting their first victory since uh, 2019 yeah, that was um, a long, long time coming. The kids have worked really hard. Uh, they had a great summer uh, working together in the weight room and uh, on the f- on the field and um, learning a new playbook with the coach. And having um, all those coaches available to be able to work with the kids has really paid off. They um, it's a, it's a hard working uh, group. There's not a whole bunch of guys, uh, but I would imagine that that. Uh, that will change over time. Coach Schaefer creates an environment um, and a culture uh, in within his program of um, family and togetherness, and uh, that's kind of what we're shooting for in all the sports. Um, of course, all of our coaches are very knowledgeable about what the sport that they're coaching, but being able to make those connections with those kids and create that environment um, where people want to be there and uh, and a culture of uh, belonging and a willingness to sacrifice and, and work towards the common good is what we want the coaches to work for. Absolutely. And it sounds like you got a great bunch of coaches this year for all your sports, not just for football, but all the sports. Yeah, the, the coaching staff, the, this fall coaching staff I'm um, getting to know, I, I knew uh, several of them. Uh, outside of the coaching realm, but Aaron Leap just does a great job, and her staff with Sarah Dalton and Renee Durkis, they then uh, Caitlin Ranstead, they're just doing, they just do a great job with the girls. And um, unfortunately, they're out for a little bit, but we will uh, see them back hopefully Monday, um, and that'll be nice to hear those hear those balls thumping again in the uh, in the gym. And then Elmer Rock and Eric Shakelin, they just they they just do a really nice job of. Um, They've done a really nice job of teaching uh, with boys soccer, and it's come a long way um, from the beginning of the season. The other night, I know they lost to Wabash, but um, it was very competitive. The guys played really hard, played all the way to the end. We had two overtime sessions. Um, That was a tough conference loss, but they did a great job. And Chantal Rensberger and uh, Mark Eber do a really are really improving um, the competitiveness right now with the girls. Um, soccer and it's a lot of fun to watch um, watch that improvement and see that excitement build uh, in their program and uh, of course Jesse Atkinson he's been a a mainstay with the tennis program at the high school for the boys and the girls and and he's got a he's got a fabulous helper and uh, Tammy Hooker um, that's his mom uh, she does a great job, and she's been around for a long time. And um, and then our cheer coach, Allie Handy, has done a really nice job. We got an email from her last night that there are um, inquiries into uh, possibly being able to join the cheer squad, and she wants to hold another quote-unquote tryout, uh, which next week uh, to, to maybe have additional uh, ladies on the squad. So... That comes with excitement for what's happening in the building. That comes from excitement and spirit and school and being able to participate. And um, those are things that we really, really uh, look forward to. Not just the wins, but wins help, of course. But it's that environment and that culture that we're working to create um, 
at the high school. Yeah, definitely a great environment. You guys have done a great job. Um, sad that I didn't go to Rochester. Uh, I had the choice, but uh, Valley was a little closer drive for me, so I, I unfortunately went to Valley. But, hey, I, I black and gold through and through. Yes, black and gold through and through. I've, I'm a transplant, but I've been here for 21 years. So, exactly. Um, you know, I grew up in the Kokomo area, a much bigger school environment. Um, but this is a great place to to raise a raise a family and um, and be involved. The community support has been absolutely astounding. It's just been so great. Um, so many times I hear whatever you need, whatever you need, whatever the kids need. And that just, you know, it, it gives, um, it gives us the freedom to, you know, come up with new, uh, and, and exciting ways to be able to help the kids with different things. And anytime I approach a community member, they are, they're all about it. And that, that's a, just a great feeling that the, the support is here. Yes, it is. And I think we see that at each and every game. Honestly, I mean, we fill those stands. Yeah. And it's not just the parents of the kids. Um, it's, it's a fantastic um, environment uh, to come to. The facilities are really nice. It, it, it's a great place. The uh, grounds crew did a fantastic job getting the field ready for Saturday or for Friday night. They they're fairly new, um, and you know it was um, it was uh, it was a project to get it done. And um, we we worked together with them, and we think we put a very nice product out there for the community to see. I think Knox was appreciative of it. We heard several comments about um, whether we got a new field or what, because it looked so good. And, and that's just a testament to hard work because last week, as you remember, it, it wasn't nice and cool like it is now. It was right. pretty steamy. And yes. uh, the guys were out there really getting after it. And um, you know, getting a field ready, a football field ready for a contest is um, no small, no small task. And and uh, they did a great job of doing that. And we really appreciate their effort. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for stopping by. Best of luck to all of the zebra teams that are in action over the next seven days. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you.